Hi. So back out on Dartmoor again. It's getting to be a habit, this. Uh, so, I've driven down to Devon. I have to be here on a family errand again tomorrow, so I thought I'd pick this as a, as a camp, but uh, let me just show you the view. As you can see, not going to see a right lot. So I've just parked at Sorton Church. Interesting place that. I was reading up about it yesterday while I was trying to find out if I'm allowed to park there overnight. Uh, and I couldn't find out that out, so I just parked it and hoped. Apparently there's been a place of worship there since 907. At which time it was, I guess, probably just a cross in the middle of the green or a shed or something. Anyway, the actual church was licensed. It seems in 1314, I think. And it's been used as worship ever since. It's what's known at that time as a chapel of ease in the, in the 1300s and probably way beyond as well, which is a chapel they put up for those people who can't easily get to the Paris church, which is in a village a bit farther away. And the reverend of the Paris church is supposed to provide a chaplain for the chapels of ease. And in the 1370s, the reverend at the time decided he couldn't be bothered with that. So the locals took him to what was called the church court, which went all the way to the Archbishop of Canterbury. And they won. <laughs> yeah, they won. So the vicar not only had to provide him with a chaplain, he had to pay all their expenses as well. So that was an expensive mistake. A bit later on, Oh, crikey. Yeah, a bit later on, the church needed some desperate repairs. And this time, the vicar won, because the locals had to pay for all the repairs. So they sort of rebuilt it, slightly out of line with the foundations. Whether that's a sort of thumbs up, who knows, don't know. Anyway, you might have guessed I'm on Sorton Down and walking into the fog. So I'll do that and I'll catch up with you. I was going to say when there's something to see, but I doubt you're going to see anything. But there you go. <coughs> Let's get up this hill before I completely run out of breath trying to talk and walk at the same time. Just got to the next little historic thing on my walk today, probably the last one to be honest. And this is the Sorton Ice Factory. Now if you look here, you can see the remnants of some ponds and there's, there's more, several rows of them. This was put together in 1875 by a chap called James Henderson, who got a lease off the Duchy of Cornwall, who then owned and probably still own the land, to dig some ponds, allow them to fill from a spring. Don't know if that spring's still here, might have a look. And then freeze during the winter, and then in the early winter he'd dig it up and sell it. That was the idea. So first opened in 1875 and he had a reasonable year. They had some sort of accident with the cement lining of the ponds and then they got a hundred tons of ice out of it. Then they had two mild years when it just didn't freeze. Not, you know, not enough to make blocks of ice. And then he had a run of good years going up to a point where he made 300 tonnes of ice one year, a couple more mild years followed, and then competition from artificial ice made in factories in Plymouth, I think, and the price of the ice dropped. So he was able to make ice, couldn't really sell it at any sort of price. So by 1886, he'd had enough, and went back to the duchy, 
and uh, let the lease go. You had to pay him to let the lease go, and that was the end of the ice factory. He then had to basically dismantle the, the machinery, and you're supposed to fill in the ponds. You can see he made some sort of effort at it. But interesting, eh? How they used to make ice in the 1870s, 1880s. Cool. This is on the slopes of Sarton Tor, which is up there. Now, I had intended to go up there, but I'm not going to bother for two reasons. Firstly, I won't be able to see anything anyway. And secondly, I met a couple of lads from London in the car park, and they're camping up there tonight. So I just want to give them space. And, uh, yeah, I'm off towards Shelston Tor. I know people have camped there before, but I don't think anyone's, as far as I can work out, no one's come from Sarton Church to get there, so there's no path on the map, but that doesn't mean a lot on the moor. So uh, we'll find out. There's a couple of stones down here. I'm just going to go and see what these are. They look like gate posts, don't they? Maybe, don't know. There's nothing on the map to indicate that they mean anything. And we shall see. Maybe it's boundary stones. Let's see if there's anything on them. Oh, there's a cross on that one. And you can really see which way the wind's blowing, can't you? Let's have a look at the other one. Yeah, that's pretty manky, that one. Looks more like concrete than stone. No, nothing of any interest on that one. I haven't done a lot of filming on the way so far because there's, there is not a lot to see really. Let me just show you where I've come from. Not a lot to see. I've got all this way before I can see where I'm going. And I don't know what you can see on the GoPro, but there's like a little valley in front of me and the other side of that is Shalston Tor, which is where I'm headed. So I didn't get lost. Quite happy with that. Just got to go down there and up there and find a pitch and uh, get out of these wet clothes. as much as I can get in amongst the rocks. Not ideal, unfortunately, but close enough. Uh, I'm in the tent. I got it up. I did initially pitch it the other way around because you're supposed to put the, the foot end into the wind, but when it's wind and rain, the rain just blows in. So I've turned it round. That's a feat in itself, isn't it? So I'm in, I've got all my wet stuff. Hanging up, uh, bags and coats and stuff. I don't think anything's going to dry, but uh, anyway, I'm in. So I just got to get my tent sorted and then start thinking about having a brew, I think. The first brew of the night. Wind's got up a bit. I'm glad I turned the tent around. I doubt that I'll be getting out of the tent much, to be honest. I'll have to obviously check the guys a bit later on, but um, there's nothing to see, um, just total cloud cover. Well, cloud cover down below where I am, actually. It's fog, rain, occasional blast of wind, but I doubt it's more than 20, 20 ish miles an hour. I doubt it. I'm not going to bother me measuring it because you know you only want exciting measurements, don't you? So, currently drinking Oxo. Ah, my sister brought me a new packet of OXO cubes for Christmas. Thank you. It's just as well because it's the last one out of the old packet. So tonight we have this. This is a boil in the bag job from the Steak Detective. Steak, vegetables and dumplings. If this is one I heard of from... Uh, Karen's Gone Wild channel. Karen had one. 
on her last camp. So I thought I'd try it. They're only about 5, 545, 550, something like that. So quite cheap. But there is a 395 um, postage charge. So I bought six just to, uh, you know, spread the postage out a bit. So I guess they're less than, still less than six quid each. So we'll see. Breakfast, the usual porridge. I've got tomato soup. And I've also now got some of these. I missed these on the last couple of camps. These are the, remember I told you about energy bars. So a bit later on I'll tell you how to make them, but saving them for after dinner, that's pudding. Just trying to escape from the pot. Get down, get down. Mmm. Well, oh, the gravy tastes like a proper stew. Stew gravy. Where's the spoon? Bit of steak. It's very hot. Very hot. Mmm. Yeah, that's okay. I think there's. Hmm. I haven't found any steak yet. Oh. It's not really cold enough to need my put my hat on. It's quite good because that means I haven't got to worry about whether I got it straight or not. Apparently I did quite well last time, but not quite good enough at keeping it on straight. Oh. You get what you get, don't you? Okay, so I've got another brew. Dinner was was fine. I'm not sure that it filled me up though. Didn't really matter because I had a decent lunch on the way down. Um, so yeah, I'm okay. And I've got a brew and I've got these. Now I sort of teased these a couple of videos ago and I did say if anyone wanted to know how to make them, I would do that, but I forgot all about it. Um, a couple of people did ask. so. Now this chap up here takes forever well, turning on about this recipe, so I'm going to give you the quick version. The three main ingredients are rolled oats, desiccated coconut, mixed fruit. Now that's raisins, currants, sultanas and a bit of mixed peel. We also add in some chopped nuts, some mixed seeds, usually some mi more mixed peel and some chopped up glassy cherries. Put it all in an algae bottle and then give it a shake, mix it all up. To bind it together, we're using peanut butter, butter, and mini marshmallows. Melt all that together in a pan. Then you add your dry mix and give it a good mix. Next thing to do is to melt a chocolate bar so that we can put a thin layer of chocolate on the bottom of our mold. Then we add our mixture, pack it all down, compress it down, and then put the rest of the chocolate on the top. Then we allow it to cool for a while stick it in the fridge for a few hours, and then cut it into squares. Well, there you go. Full recipe in the description. Now, back to this bloke. I think he's nearly finished rabbiting on. So, uh, yeah, if you fancy him, if you do try him, let me know. In the meantime, I'm gonna eat one. Right, you know we say, if nothing exciting happens, I'll see you in the morning. Well, I didn't get that far because something, not really exciting, but something happened. After I'd had my dinner, I had a cup of soup. I was just about to sort like sort the tent out, get everything in its place, do all that stuff. And while I'm sorting through, I realized I didn't know where my car keys were. So I calmly went through every pocket, through the rucksack, every bag, Look round the outside of the tent, inside the tent, everywhere, couldn't find them. So then I panically, in a sort of panic mode, had another scrap through. Not here, definitely not here. So what have I done with them? I don't know. I probably dropped them on the way, maybe. So there's no way I'm going to get to sleep knowing that they're out there somewhere. 
So I got all togged up and I went off trying to find my way back to the car the same way I came. Of course now it's dark, it's foggy, it's raining. I've only got a head torch to show me the way. Pretty good head torch as it turned out. Uh, but I couldn't find the exact way I came for a lot of it because, you know, it's just very indistinct paths. So eventually I got to what I thought was the road and I, the track that went back to where I wanted to go. I checked on the map and yeah, it was the track. And I set off down the track. And after a while I'm thinking, this doesn't feel right. I should be going downhill. I'm going uphill. What's wrong here? And I'd walked about a mile the wrong way up the track. I mean, what? What a plunker. I'm better than that, but not tonight. So I had to backtrack. So that was an extra two miles. Uh, well, anyway, I eventually got back to the car. And there were the keys on the roof of the car. Thank the Lord for that. Thank you. Gods of Dartmoor, you're good to me. Ah, so now, instead of the two miles back to the car, I've walked four miles. And then I've walked another two miles back. Uh, couldn't find the path for the last three quarters of a mile, so I just sort of cross country it. But I got back. Uh, unfortunately, it absolutely slashed it down all the way there and all the way back and I'm wet. Uh, my Gore-Tex is not as good as it should be and my water trousers is not as good as they should be. So I'm sat here in a... I've got a wet jacket and wet trousers and wet socks. And... <sighs> it's all a bit mank, really. But there you go. This is what happens when you make mistakes. Two mistakes. Firstly, leaving my keys behind. Secondly, setting off without my walking sticks, which meant all the uphills were harder. And thirdly, not checking which way I was walking up that damn road. I just, do you know, I can't believe I did that. I cannot believe I did that. I'm better than that. But there you go. So that's why there hasn't been a lot of filming. Anyway, I've just made a brew. I'm gonna drink that. And then I'm gonna get my tent organized. I know the car keys are just over there. Uh, get in my bag and try and get some sleep. <sighs> right, I'll see you in the morning. Oh, wow. So the uh, forecast today is for fog and mist and rain later on, but look what we actually have. There's Sarton Down. Is it Sarton? Sorton? I've heard people call it Sorton Down over there. Devon, Cornwall. Look at it. Absolutely beautiful. And up here, yes, tour High Willies, Fordsman's Ledge, and a rock with a beak. Hmm, interesting. This is the valley. This is what I was hoping for when I came down from Gloucestershire. That's the West Oatman River, as you can see, raging at the moment. Blackator Copse, which is a really ancient woodland. All those trees are all gnarly and they're sitting, growing in between hundreds, thousands of rocks, all covered in green moss. It's absolutely beautiful. I'll take you there one day. And then above it is Blackator Cop, uh, Blackator Cops, Blackator. Now, Trev from Summit of Nothing capped up there in a bivy in a dip. Trev's dip, we've been calling it. It does look beautiful, but the wind is biting. So I hope those lads on Sorton Tour manage to find some shelter, because this 
This is what I could hear most of the night. Wow. Yes, yeah, it's, it's sort of rocking me a bit. Anyway, I'm going to get some breakfast. It's about eight o'clock. Being Dartmoor is in no great hurry. So, uh, yeah, get some breakfast. Try and dry out some of the stuff I got wet last night on my epic adventure. So the place looks a bit like a laundry in a minute, trying to dry stuff out after my epic. I don't want to hang around for too long now. So I'll have some porridge, a cup of coffee, and then start packing up. Careful. <laughs> Morning. Finally packed up, uh, as you can see, no trace left, bit of a boot print, that's all. And if you look, if you look up there, you can see the fog's coming in. So I'm gonna get a move on and uh, get down this hill <laughs> again. So, going down there and up there, I'm just really tempted to contour around over there. But, yeah, look at the view. All right, I'm gonna get down, I'll catch up with you later. I know, it was pathetic, wasn't it? Melton Reservoir down there. Oh, lovely. This, uh, these fields that you can see, they're outside the access land. So almost back to the car. A couple of things to show you. Sort and tour up there. Very close to the car if you uh, fancy that. And then down here is Sort Sorton and the church. It's a lovely church, but I couldn't go in. It was locked. Uh, it's normally open, so I'm not sure what happened. Anyway, I'll leave you here. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Try to resist a thumbs down if you didn't. And I'll leave you with this view. See you next time, maybe.